Kundo Age of Rampant when released on July 23, 2014, set an all-time record for opening day. Although a week later, the film The Admiral Roaring Currents became the new record holder. Despite that, the film still went on to receive many awards and nominations, including Best Cinematography at the 34th Korean Association of Film Critics Awards, as well as the 35th Blue Dragon Film Awards to name a few. Director Yoon Jung Bin is known for his films that show a realistic portrayal of Korean society, but when this film came out, many questioned why his style had changed to be more aimed at entertainment. His response was that he felt there was not much more that he could show about the contradictions of Korean society, and he was tired of doing the same thing, and so he instead looked back to his childhood and took inspiration from the western movies and cartoons he had once enjoyed. Director Yoon Jung Bin still wanted to impart a message in the film, and I will be delving into that subject a little later. As for the cast of the film, we have Ha Jung Woo as Do Mo Chi, otherwise known as Do Chi, who was a former butcher, which during the Joseon period was considered the lowest class. The plot of the film centers around Do Chi's background and story, making him the main protagonist for the film. We also have Gang Dong Woon as Jo Yoon, who is another fantastic lead for the film. In my honest opinion, his character was the most fascinating. Jo Yoon is known for his high marks in martial arts, but other than that, his story is quite tragic and twisted, and that as a son of a concubine, he has no legitimate rights in the family, and is frowned upon by his father as well as the Joseon society. As for the rest of the main cast, they make up the members of the Kundo, who are a band of fighters, or you could call them vigilantes, who work to rise against authority and bring justice to the lower class. Lee Sung Min plays Dae Ho, who is the leader of the Kundo. Next, we have Lee Gung Young as Ting Chu, who provides a lot of the wisdom and guidance for the group, and is known as the Vicious Monk. Cho Jin Wung plays Lee Tae Ki, who was a former aristocrat. Next, we have Yoon Ji Hye as Ma Hyang, whose character is beautifully highlighted with her sharp skills with a bow and arrow. Finally, Ma Dong Sok as Chun Bu, who is known for his brute and strength. I mentioned earlier that although director Yoon Jung Bin decided to aim for entertainment with this film, he still wanted to impart a message. To explain the context of this message, I need to give some historical background first, so let's dive in. The film is set during the year of 1862, which aligns with the late Joseon dynasty. It was a time in which the wealthy aristocrats ruled the country and exploited the lower class. As a result, corruption, poverty, hunger, and death were quite rampant. You see what I did there? Alright, okay, not funny. Anyways, this action-packed movie reveals a lot about the division between the social classes as well as the division in socioeconomic statuses, which makes the film quite unique. Even the careful details in the camera work help to emphasize the contrast between the social classes. When the screen pans over the lower class, the lighting is often dull along with the scenery, but on the other hand, when the camera pans to the aristocrats, the background and the colors are quite vibrant. Additionally, there are little details throughout the film that suggest an attempt to modernize during the Joseon period. For instance, the governor had a liking for Chinese foreign goods, and the film suggests some Western influence as well when Zhou Yun's rifle comes into focus. Ultimately though, that attempt to modernize did not succumb to much, as the majority of the population had no inclination for such items, most likely caused by the overall population being poor and exploited. Lastly, similar to feudalism in Europe, in which the classes were the kings, then lords, followed by the knights, and finally the peasants, Korea during the Joseon period had essentially four classes as well. The Yangban, nobility, the middle-class Chungin, Sangmin, or the commoners, and the Chonmin, and the outcasts at the very bottom. Joseon society was ruled by the Yangbin, and the slaves were of the lowest class, and the person's class determined their occupation in the way they were treated. This mistreatment and division of the lower class helps to set up the plot for the film. Okay, enough of the history lesson. Let's get into the action-packed plot. In the year of 1862, in the kingdom of the Joseon dynasty, Government corruption and class division has consequently led to the formation of a group of bandits called the Kundo, who rise against the inequitable upper-class aristocrats. The plot essentially starts with Dolce being hired by Jo Yoon for an assassination. To give a little backdrop on the who, what, and why of the assassination, Jo Yoon, although born as a son of a concubine, was still his father's legitimate child and therefore was the heir. However, later on in his years, his father had another child with his stepmom in which they gave birth to a son. From then on, Jo Yoon was cast aside and he began to have a thirst for vengeance. Over time, Jo Yoon's half-brother is dead, but he leaves behind a pregnant wife who will give birth to a boy. Jo Yoon sees his nephew as a threat and that is why he hires Do Chi to do his dirty work for him. However, when the time comes for Do Chi to carry out his mission, he finds himself unable to, to do the deed. As a result, Jo Yoon punishes Do Chi by burning his house down, which ends up killing Do Chi's mother and sister. Do Chi is soon to be executed, but the Kunda comes right in to save his neck. Literally. 
From that point on, Dolce is officially a member of the Kundo and trains with them, carrying out Robin Hood-like missions and stealing from the rich and giving back to the poor, as well as rising against the unjust authority. The nitty-gritty of the plot is the rivalry between the Kundo and Joyun, or should I say Dolce and Joyun. Anyways, the reason that the Kundo and Ju Joyun come into contact stems from the fact that the group of bandits are protecting his nephew and the mother when Joyun is trying to capture and kill them. So fast forward to the end because the rest is just a back and forth battle between the two, Dolce and Joyun end up with their final duel in a bamboo forest. Joyun ends up sacrificing his life for his nephew by taking the sword slice to his neck, and this final scene is exactly why I would say most people, or maybe it's just me, finds Joyun's character the most fascinating. So for my thoughts, the film Kundo Age of Rampant twisted Joyun's character into one with quite a lot of depth, despite him being portrayed as the film's antagonist. Analyzing his character deeper, I felt that Jo Yoon only ever wanted to be loved and acknowledged because he grew up being viewed as less than by society because his mother was a concubine. It seems that all his actions align with his desire to prove that he belongs, from ranking high in martial arts and swordsmanship to going so far as to almost kill his half-brother. Ultimately, his character is one of sorrow and loneliness. It seems that Jo Yoon was never truly understood by anyone except perhaps Dolce. From my perspective, I believe that Dolce left Jo Yoon's top knot because Dolce understood what it meant to bet one's life to change their fate as Jo Yoon had attempted to do all throughout his life. Okay, so you might be wondering what a top knot is. Well, what I learned about it is quite interesting. So whenever Dolce defeats an enemy, he symbolically castrates them by cutting off their top knots, which during the Joseon dynasty was representative of one's aristocratic inheritance. The metaphorical removal of the top knot symbolizes an elemental connection between social status and masculinity. Therefore, Dolce's emasculation of the nobility emphasizes, is, emphasizes a symbolic nature between social status and political power. So, going back to what I was saying before, whenever Dolce tried to change his fate as a low-class butcher, he ended up losing his mother and sister. Jo Yoon tried to change his fate by seeking power through vicious means, only to have his father despise him further. However, Jo Yoon is able to somewhat redeem his character in sacrificing his own life for his nephew, and I think that is also a contributing factor that made Dolce to perhaps sympathize with Jo Yoon's character, or perhaps to have the viewers sympathize with his character. The origin and the death of the two main characters certainly brought a lot of appeal to the film.